Welcome everyone. This lecture is designed to prepare the general practitioner to provide prophylactic uterotonic agents and to be competent in management of refractory uterine atony. Obstetric hemorrhage is the leading cause of maternal death in Ethiopia and most hemorrhages occur during the postpartum period. Immediately following caesarean delivery of the newborn, prevention of postpartum hemorrhage should be started. One of the following uterotonic should be given. Oxytocin 10 to 40 international unit diluted in 1 liter crystalloid is infused over 4 to 8 hours and often higher doses like 40 to 80 international units are given if pPH risk factors are present. Heat stable carbitocin 100 microgram IV or IM or mesoprostol 200 to 400 microgram sublingually can be given. During caesarean section, following delivery of the placenta, two bleeding problems may be encountered. One is arterial bleeding from uterine tears and the other one is bleeding from anatonic uterus. Bleeding from anatonic uterus is managed initially by rubbing over the fundus of the uterus to stimulate contraction and retraction. A second line oxytocic drug like mesoprostol or ergometrine should be administered according to standard of care. Tanexamic acid 1 gram should be administered intravenously and also a blood specimen must be sent to the blood bank for cross match. If bleeding continues from an atonic uterus and if pharmacological measures fail to control the hemorrhage, surgical interventions should be initiated as early as possible. Here we will discuss about two surgical interventions which are simple and easy to apply. Modified B lynch or Heyman compression suture. Modified B lynch or Heyman compression suture is one of the conservative surgical techniques that is used to control obstetric hemorrhage, especially in situations of postpartum hemorrhage. Extrorize the uterus and by manually compress it to test for potential success. Using large needle with chromic cut gut number one or number two, Two vertical compression sutures are placed from anterior to posterior uterine wall directly without hysterectomy. Sutures should be applied correctly with even tension and no shouldering. After applying the sutures, check if bleeding is controlled vaginally. Another conservative surgical technique that is used to control obstetric hemorrhage is uterine balloon tamponade. It is typically used when there is ongoing bleeding from the uterus due to uterine atony that is not responding to conservative measures or when other more invasive interventions like surgery are not immediately possible or desired. A cheap available method for applying uterine balloon tamponade is condom catheter procedure. The required equipment for this procedure consists of condom, vicryl tie, Foley catheter, and a 50 ml syringe. The important steps that are followed during uterine balloon tamponade insertion are unrolling the condom and placing the Foley catheter halfway into the condom, leaving the condom hanging loosely at the end of the Foley. Tie the condom onto the Foley catheter.
The cervix is then located using two fingers and the uterine balloon is inserted into the uterus with the fundus. We should be sure that it is not just in the vagina. If the balloon is inflated in the vagina, it may not address bleeding from within the uterus. The catheter is then inflated with 15 ml of water. The condom is filled with 300 to 500 ml of water or more as may required until the bleeding stops or meet resistance. We should continue to check to see that the uterine balloon tamponade has not slipped into the vagina as it is filled. If the bleeding does not stop, other causes of PPH should be re-examined. Secure the catheter on the thigh of the woman so it does not pull out with her movement. Place the woman in a recovery position. After a successful insertion of the uterine balloon tamponade, the mother is ready for careful observation or transfer to a referral facility. A prophylactic dose of broad-spectrum antibiotics such as IV or IM ceftriaxone is recommended when the uterine balloon is placed. The uterine balloon should stay in place for at least 6 to 24 hours. The mother's vital signs and fundal height should be examined every 15 minutes for the first hour or longer if she is still showing signs of severe anemia and then at least every four hourly. If a decision to transfer the mother is made, the balloon should not be removed before transfer. Always try to transfer the newborn with the mother so that breastfeeding can be continued. The mother should be given appropriate IV fluids or blood replacement products until she is stable and is no longer heavily bleeding. After 6 to 24 hours, while the mother is being observed, the balloon should then be deflated. Steps to follow are explain the procedure to the mother, wash your hands and put on gloves, and then remove 100 ml of water from the balloon and observe closely for one hour to see if bleeding resumes. If significant bleeding resumes, refill the balloon and re-examine the patient. The patient may need to be transferred to a higher level of care where other causes of bleeding like retained products, cervical tears or coagulopathies can be further examined and treated. If there is no bleeding after one hour, withdraw all the water from the balloon using the syringe. Withdraw the 50 ml of water from the smaller foliate balloon. Gently remove the uterine balloon tamponade device and discard it. Uterine balloon tamponade is not a definitive treatment for the underlying cause of bleeding and further management or interventions may be required to address the underlying cause. In summary, in this video, we have discussed about postpartum hemorrhage prevention in caesarean section and two of the simple surgical interventions to control obstetric hemorrhage. These are modified bilinch or Heyman compression suture and uterine balloon tamponade insertion. Thank you for watching.